Hola. Hoy pueden abrir sus libros, so open your books, to page 13. Then we'll look at page 14. Y vamos a hablar de la isla bonita. La isla bonita. Does that ring a bell? ¿Qué es esto? Claro. Qué bueno. Entonces, voy a ver si puedo parar esto. Muchas gracias, Madonna. So yes, if you've uh, now opened your book to page 13, página 13, we will take a quick look at Here we go. Página 13. There we go. So, la isla es bonita. That's what you have on page 13. Let's compare it to, and thank you very much, Madonna, for that classic 80s song. And we'll talk about the stereotypes in that video. Remember, it was a video shot in the 80s. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about the images, the colors, the sounds, and, uh, well, the perception of what it means to be Latino or Latinx, okay? So, back to grammar. La isla es bonita. Ustedes tienen su libro abierto, page 13, your book is open. You're seeing this, you're comparing it with Madonna's title. The title of her song, La isla bonita. So, what's the first thing you guys notice? Because I know ustedes son muy inteligentes, estudiantes inteligentes, ven la diferencia entre las dos frases, the two sentences, and you think, wait a minute, la isla bonita, ¿cuál es la diferencia? Ah, well, the difference between what's in your book and what's here is la isla es bonita. I always want you guys to put a verb in your sentence. So, on page 13, we slowly go through what you see here, the parts of a sentence. ¿Qué es una frase? Now, unless you're Madonna or a famous poet, a famous writer, I don't want you using this stylistic trope. A sentence that doesn't have a verb in español es una frase elíptica. An elliptical sentence, I think, in English, but remember, no soy profesora de inglés, eh? Entonces, une phrase elliptique, um, une phrase qui n'a pas de verbe. Mais dans span 1, span 2, span 3, je veux voir des verbes. Je veux vous entendre utiliser conjuguer vos verbes. So remember, for me, you need to have a verb in every sentence. And why do I, and I think Dr. Phil likes verbs in your sentences, because verbs are action words and I want you to do stuff and I want whatever you're writing to do things, all right? We want actions there. This, La Isla Bonita, is quite pretty, means the pretty island, but La Isla es bonita, the island is beautiful, the island is pretty, the island is... Mm, uh, well, bonita means linda, bonita, hermosa. I mean, it really means pretty, uh, attractive, atractiva. Muchos adjetivos. We will learn more and more adjectives. And remember, this is why we go through page 13, so that knowledge is power. You get to learn that la isla es el sujeto. Es el sujeto. La isla, the subject, es el verbo, the action. What is it? And ¿qué es la isla? Es bonita. Aquí, we would say complemento, and then if you want to analyze that, which gives information about the noun, the noun, the subject that happens to be the subject of the sentence, then we find out, ah, esto es un adjetivo. So, la isla es bonita. Always put a verb in your sentences. And we'll learn to distinguish el sujeto, Quién, who is doing the action, verbo, action word, and in this case, el complemento that gives us information about the subject, in this case it's a noun, here we have an adjective, adjetivo, and we'll learn more and more adjectives because they help us describe 
people, places, and things. And what are people, places, and things? Those are nouns. And here, isla is a feminine noun, and it's singular. So we're going to learn now to take apart the sujeto. We have the noun, el sustantivo. So if you go down here, you'll see that, ah, sustantivo, that's why I had you define these. If you looked it up, you found out that that's a noun. Si le nom. People, places, things. Those are nouns. El verbo en esta frase, the verb, is el verbo ser. So we'll correct this in class later. This is just a quick snapshot to get us to page 14 so that you learn the difference between the noun and the article. El artículo. Artículo. So vamos a ver qué pasa con los artículos. And we'll leave this example up here and we'll just scroll down. Ah, muy bien. Viva la concordancia. Muy bien. So agreement, eh? Let's all agree and get along. Yeah, that's right. So agreement is what we have in Spanish because the nouns are gendered in Spanish. So nouns, uh, and that's why we're going to spend a lot of time memorizing vocabulary and memorizing it always with the article. Because the article, la in this case, hmm, es un artículo determinado, determinado, we have el, la, los, las, that's a determinate article. That means you know specifically what you're referring to. It's very specific. So in English, you'd say the. In French, la chaise, le livre. That's singular. So the. And then plural of that article Artículo determinado, just so you know the difference, what these means, and you should be putting, writing down notes and putting them in your book at page 14. The, or le, la, and then plural, les livres. Ah, muy bien. That's it. The books. So, that's the determinate article. The other ones, un, una, unos, unas, those are indeterminate articles. So, if I were to say... Una isla. Una isla bonita. A pretty island. Un il. Joli ou une jolie il. Uh, adjective placement and all that is a bit different in French and Spanish. So, una, it could be any. It's indeterminado. Indeterminado. More general. A or some. Some books. Unos libros interesantes. Not the. That, that one. You like when it's specific. Specifico, determinado. Indeterminado is más general. Okay? That's the big difference here. So all I wanted you to focus on in this page is paying attention to gender. And sometimes if you have a noun like estudiante, estudiante. Aha. So, estudiante. The noun ends in E? Ah, they end in E. They always agree. How do you know the gender of this noun? You can't guess it. And that's what we're going to try to see with a chart I prepared for you guys on, a, on page uh, 16 or 17. We'll check. Estudiante. Hmm. How do you know if it's a male student or a female student? Because Spanish is gendered. Well, the article. If you say un estudiante es masculino, la 